Hello, I'm Cam Ingram. We're here in the Road Scholar showroom today. I'm with Steven Sirio from the Bond Group, and we're on our second car of our next Group P lot on Bring a Trailer. And we're with this very special 1964 SC cab. Why it's special is it's had five owners from new, and every one of them documented and every mile documented since original ownership. Yeah, there's no question of TMU. There's no question of well, the last guy had it for five years, and we have those records. This goes back to day one. And my little mea culpa here, as I may have missed, if for somebody's paying attention, I may have uh, accidentally misled you on our big video, if you've watched that, where I said this was original paint and leather, when in fact I was talking about the 65 there. So don't... Uh, nice recovery. <laughs> yeah. Nice recovery. No, somebody's got to point it out. Because we have the documentation of this being repainted and retrimmed. Uh -huh. um, so I don't want to be called a liar again in my life. Fascinating story, though. An SC Cabriolet is obviously one of the most desirable push rod models that Porsche ever made. It's, it's the end of an era for yep. the 356 model line. Uh, this car, one of my favorite colors, champagne yellow. It was ordered brand new in Colorado Springs and, you know, 356. Nerding. Nerding. This is the original owner's information. He took delivery of it in Colorado Springs in August, ironically, we're in August right now, August 14th, 1965. And then there's the second owner's business card. And he sold, so the, he took owner, uh, the, the first owner took delivery of this in 65. The next owner takes delivery in 67. And the third owner takes delivery in 1971 with 17,000 miles on it. We know this through all the paperwork. Yeah, again, the paperwork here uh, is remarkable. Um, I, I'm always fascinated when people keep everything like this little Porsche parade tag from the fourth owner, Mr. Bill Jackson. Yes. Uh, massive. Porsche collector, uh, one of the very first proper collectors in the country um, before anybody started really, you know, doing that in the 80s. Um, yeah, that's very special to me because I competed uh, against Bill and we also did a car for Bill and he actually won his class at Porsche Parade and that's a very special memento. He was a, a remarkable guy. He was buying these cars from Porsche out of the museum in some instances back in the day and had great taste. This is the original Cardex documenting from Porsche, of course the warranty card, documenting the car as a champagne yellow car with black leather interior with some very special options including the side spears. Dr. Bill Jackson later on uh, purchased the hard top so this car comes with uh, a proper hard top but he purchased that later on in life. And uh, one of the earlier owners put the Lucas fog lights on that I love. Yeah, those uh, are a great period piece. And of course the bullet mirrors, I also, that was a very in period thing to do. Yeah, um, the car has just the right amount of bling on it. It's, yeah. not, uh, it's not overdone. Yeah. And I had one of these uh, years ago with a client whose biggest complaint was because the color was so popular with women, every time he was at a stoplight, he, would, he was a very shy guy, and he would just get yeah. woefully embarrassed because huh. somebody would compliment him on the car. Really? He just said, love your car, and he'd be like, oh, geez. Um, yeah, it's one of my favorite colors, too. Absolutely love that sort of pastel yellow look. Um, it looks like a different car with a hard top, too. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it looks like, you know, people that aren't readily knowledgeable about 356 they always come up and they're like i love the, this coupe this is awesome you're like it's actually a hard top cab so. well and it, it, to your point about this being at the very end of 356 production in many ways it's one of the most usable relatively affordable 356s to buy i mean it's not um as inexpensive as a coupe would be yeah. but it's the most refined package you're going to get at the very end of the run for a 356 100%. and with great options. I mean, it really is just a get in it and go car. But looking here a little bit, uh, you've got another just sort of well, great Great history. Style. Again, you know, Dr. Jackson bought this car. This is the original bill sale from the second, uh, no, I'm sorry, the third owner to Dr. J uh, in 1973. And again, this car is a numbers matching drivetrain. So it's original engine transmission. This, those things were important to Dr. J. Here's the original, you know, here's the copy yeah. of the title and his name. And, you know, letters of correspondence from the third owner to Dr. J, but also all this documentation of, you know, here's all the owners, the mileage of when they bought, you know, the previous guys to Dr. J. 
It's just such great stuff. Well, and the car never left Colorado until it came to North Carolina, which so is we, interesting. So Dr. Jackson bought this car in 73, and we purchased it from his estate in 2020. And uh, that's a pretty long-term ownership. Yeah, that's and, the remarkable. Yeah, all the registration cards, all the service records going back to 1968. Eight. Um, through all the Porsche dealerships in Colorado at the time, because it spent time in Denver and Colorado Springs. One of the other fascinating things, this is the, in 1988, it had the interior redone, and then it had the car completely repainted by Dr. J. Um, but it look, I mean, if you look at it now, it's one of those things where- It feels like it's original paint. Yeah. It feels like it's an original interior car because everything has been in there so long and it yeah. just got a great vibe about it. I mean, I need another 356 <laughs> like I need a single hump camel, but well, <laughs> I, would, I really, I keep gravitating towards going back to this car yeah. thinking, well, what do I sell? But anyway, that's well, a, little, well, the that's SCs a are, rabbit hole. I love the SCs for all those reasons you said, how usable. These are amazing because I was, I had the honor to visit Dr. Jackson many times. Of course, my family's own collection, many collections have ex-Dr. Jackson cars. But he had these infamous pink cards, and he would keep track of starting, adding fuel, warm up, adequate, adequate warm up. And so he just took these, you know, these go all the way back to 1993. It's just so cool to have this kind of documentation with a car, and it goes on and on, yeah, it's, on and on. It's wild. All, all these copies of checks, I love that, canceled checks, canceled checks Proof are that amazing. He paid for everything. Yeah, exactly. And then this car was, uh, we were laughing about this because this is one of the, if you've been doing this a while, one of the most famous Porsche books. Oh, the Harry Rasmussen book, which if you were into cars in the 80s, chances are you had the collection of the Rasmussen book on Porsches, Mercedes Benz. Then there was one that featured uh, uh, all European cars, Jag, Aston, Porsche, Mercedes. Uh, they were all uh, in, in a collection. And he did a Ferrari one. And... You know, to have a, a car that was in one of Harry's books is really cool. I mean, it, it is total, you know, geekdom. Oh, it's good. Uh, yeah. There's a whole contract in here between Henry and Dr. <laughs> J about he specifically needs 50. If he agrees to do this, he wants 50 or 100 books. And that's part of the, you know, so Dr. Jackson. Uh, but here's a picture. This is so cool. These period Kando shots of, uh, of him taking pictures of the car for the book. And, you know... It seems like nuanced details or trivia now, but it, it's important to guys like you and I because we, I mean, that book has always been on my bookshelf. If you're poor, that's a picture book now. Well, yeah, no. Before it, Instagram. And it's not, it's it's interesting. It's not a Hasselblad. I think it's a Bronica going back to my days. So anyway, medium format camera, Mr. Rasmussen in his tidy whitey pants here. This is, uh, is crazy. It, is it after Labor Day or before uh, Labor Day? <laughs> Hold on. It's before. Before Labor Day. It's, but this could, this could be... This could be before Memorial Day as well. It's May 81. Yeah. Well, that's, that's very it, funny. folks. That's, okay. the, that's the 411 on this uh, lovely SC cab. I love, again, SC cabs. It's funny when you when you and I interact with uh, 356 market folks looking into getting in the market. An SC cab or 356A, they're kind of the opposite ends of the spectrum. Yep. Um, but those seem to be kind of the two models that always come up in conversation. Yeah, no, that's a, it, it's a great car if you have a one car garage. You know, it's a great all around uh, vintage Porsche, Porsche to, to have. So good luck with this. I hope this goes to a, a, another great new owner on Bring a Trailer. Um, Cameron? That's it. All right. I'm excited to see this roll. Thanks, everyone. Thanks.